Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this video, I'm going to outline for you how I went about taking on a classic high school physics assignment of building a mousetrap car that can go 50 feet. Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this video, we're going to take a little vacation from chemistry and we're going to talk a little bit about engineering and physics. And the reason I want to do this is that uh, I recently had a, a physics assignment that was given to my daughter and we worked on it together and we came up with this mousetrap car. Uh, this is a very common assignment. The assignment is to build a car powered by only one simple uh, mousetrap that you can buy at the hardware store that's able to travel 50 feet. So we went about this in a very orderly fashion. We sat down and did some brainstorming, had a strategy in our mind, came up with a design, built a prototype. And as it turns out, our prototype actually went 51 feet. So we never had to build our final polished version of this vehicle. But what I'm going to do is take you through our prototype and show you all the design elements and explain to you our strategy about how we were able to build a car that went 51 feet on our first try. So our goal was to build a mousetrap car that could travel 50 feet. And we discussed two potential ways to accomplish this. The first was the tortoise approach, to build a car that has a relatively small rear axle compared to the size of its rear wheel. This will allow us to use a very long drivetrain to apply torque very slightly, but for a very long time, ultimately causing our car to finish that 50 feet under power. Now strategy number two, was the hair strategy, in which we use a much larger rear axle relative to the size of our rear wheel. This will only allow us to use a very short drivetrain that will only operate for a short period of time, but will deliver a large amount of torque and accelerate our vehicle dramatically, allowing it, hopefully, to coast to the finish under the influence of that initial momentum that it built up. We've decided to use the tortoise strategy for our mouse, uh, mousetrap car design. For our mousetrap car, we decided to use 3 16 inch dowel rods as our axles. These naturally have a diameter of 3 16 inch. We also use standard DVDs for the wheels, which have a diameter of about 4 and a half inches. We went to the garage and found some old balsa wood rulers that we could use to build our frame. And we decided to use nylon dental floss as our drivetrain. So what about the dimensions of that frame and that drivetrain? How do they factor into this design? Well, let's think again about those axles. Our axle circumference has about 0.589 inches. That means every axle rotation requires 0.589 inches worth of travel on the part of our drivetrain. Now, the wheels that are at the ground have a circumference of about 14.1 inches. So how does that allow us to do a calculation to determine how long the drivetrain must be? Well, 50 feet of travel converted to inches and then converted for the fact that we get 14.1 inches of vehicle travel for every 0.589 inches worth of axle rotation, we can calculate that we need to pull about 25 inches worth of our dental floss drivetrain in order to get our vehicle across the finish line. And of course, because the mousetrap is going to be in the center of that drivetrain, we have to have a frame that can support it. So the frame needs to be at least 12 and a half inches axle to axle. So with our strategy formulated and our rough design in place, we will set about building our prototype mousetrap car. And just as I mentioned, we used a 3 16 inch dowel rod. Uh, this served as our front and rear axle, although of course it's most important on your rear axle. We also use DVDs as the wheels. Now let me show you the wheel design a little bit here, and I'll do that by disassembling the front axle since these two are essentially identical. Uh, what we did here was we glued some wire nuts to one side of a DVD and that serves as a hub for those wheels. So I can simply back off this wire nut here and remove my wheels. So here are my axles and uh, you notice that on the other side I placed a little fender washer over there. We glued that in place and the reason we did that was we wanted to be sure that the DVD plastic didn't rub hard against anything uh, on our other bearing. Uh, our other bearing on the vehicle itself is a larger fender washer right there. So we had to do a little drilling to get through the frame. I simply drilled a larger hole, if you can see it there, than the fender washer itself had. So this way, my axle, when it rotates inside of that bearing, 
only has a very small amount of contact and it spins quite freely as you can see. So the idea there of course is that once power is expended in my vehicle I want it to coast as far as it can and having a good low friction bearing for my axle is going to help that out a lot. So let's think a little bit more about that drivetrain that we discussed earlier on. We did a calculation that said we needed about 25 inches worth of drivetrain string to ensure that we rotate our back axle enough to rotate our rear wheels enough to get 50 feet worth of travel. So I've had to extend the mousetrap, you can see here. We've glued on, uh, or not glued, well we have glued, but also taped on uh, a coat hanger that we twisted a loop into, and that loop there is going to hold my drivetrain string at the end of that line. And that gives me that total distance, that total travel of 25 inches that I previously calculated was necessary. Now, attaching this drivetrain to the rear axle can be a little bit tricky because you want it to break loose at the end. If it doesn't break loose at the end of this process, then we're going to wind up with a situation where the rear axle gets tangled up. And what we really want is for that drivetrain to pull the car forward, but at the very last second, release so that those rear wheels can continue to spin without any friction or anything tangling them up. And this will allow the car to coast. Uh, we've seen some YouTube videos where folks have tried to put some kind of a, a, little, a little nub or attachment onto their rear axle that they can loop their drivetrain string over. And the idea that it would hold while winding but then release when the car is, uh, is finished running. But what we've discovered is if you use this sort of flat, strong nylon dental floss, it's just tacky enough to grab onto itself. And it really doesn't need to be looped over anything if you wind it correctly. So let me show you how we wound ours. By wrapping a small piece of this nylon dental floss underneath of the axle and then trapping it under the dental floss that's under tension, we can create a situation where that friction alone is enough to hold the dental floss in place as we wind it by slowly backing the wheels up by manually turning the wire nuts that we've used as our hubs. So with my drivetrain properly hooked to my rear axle, I can now wind up my mousetrap car simply by rotating the rear axle, pulling it backwards. And eventually, I run out of travel. So here you can see I've made that, that arm for my mousetrap just long enough that it reaches just the back axle so that it will constantly be pulling that string forward, giving me some force. And in fact, if I release this vehicle, it will actually start to run as the mousetrap starts to move that arm. And of course, if I had a long enough track, this vehicle would run for our entire 50 feet as we previously calculated. And at the end of that process, when the arm reaches the end, it will disengage from the rear axle, which will continue spinning and give me some additional travel. This should be enough to get us our 50 feet. And in fact, when we tested it, it was more than 50 feet. So with any luck, our prototype is all we're going to have to work on. We'll be done with our project. And you can imagine how to make your own mousetrap car even better than this one. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to send you off with a shot of our vehicle running the full 50 feet, and I'll see you after that on my next video.